All right. So basically we have a five step process or five and a half steps, depending on how you want to take it. Um, the very first step we need to take is to remove any themes, icons, or AODs, the always on displays that may be additional. Um, so you may notice that my phone looks a lot different than what the stock version may come. Um, obviously you have a lot of options as far as upgrades and a lot of things you can do without rooting your device. So um, definitely take advantage of that in the near future. And once you've done this process, you can use any theme you want, any icon. Just keep in mind that this will ensure that the process goes more smoothly and doesn't lag. So like I said, uh, we're going to remove the theme. So I will go ahead um, and at the top of the screen, you can press down and hold until you get this little settings menu. And then what you want to do is go to the wallpapers and themes. Scroll over to themes. And if you just click right up here at the top, what this will do is it will apply and then more or less, it will erase all of the icons and the theme that's been added and default, which is what we need. So go ahead and apply. Shouldn't take very long. The device will reboot uh, back to the home screen. So after that, what we need to do is go back into themes. So hold down at the top, wallpapers and themes again, and then scroll over to icons. Make sure that those are your stock icons at the top, um, right in this little area here. And then AODs, same thing. Make sure you have your stock AOD at the top of your screen. After that, we'll go back out to the home screen. So now that we're in our base theme, we can now close out all of our apps, which is our step number two. So we will go down to the bottom left or bottom right, depending on your orientation, to the apps button. Click on your current apps button and click close all. And close all. So once we've done that, we should pop back out to the home screen. Once on the home screen, you should then be ready for step. 3 or 3.5 depending on which variant we go through. Alright, so now we're ready for step 3 or what I call 3.5 and what I mean by this is there's two different methods that we can use um, to accomplish what we need to. So essentially what we are doing is removing all of the non-stock apps, all of the apps that don't come on the phone initially so that way we can pinpoint the problem later on. Like I said, the main issue is that the apps are conflicting from either the S7 Edge, S7, or potentially even a backup from earlier on, an app that was made for a different platform, so on and so forth. So what we need to do is get this under control and take away all of the apps. And what I will do is leave a link in the description or it, try to leave some pictures or screenshots of apps that I know for a fact do work and that are actually, you know, I guess S8 approved or S8 plus approved. So definitely look forward to that. Um, but essentially, like I said, the next step is to remove the apps. So we can either remove all of the apps manually or we can go through and do a cloud recovery and basically install all of our data back except for the app data. And I'm sure that there's probably a more simple way. And obviously if there is, I will try to update, you know, as soon as I kind of correspond, but my brain's not working at the moment, you know, it's doing the best we can to get this going. At any rate, um, we are going to, I'm just basically going to give you an example of each one, and then we will go through the next process. So you can essentially remove them all via, via your home screen if you have every app that you have um, installed on your home screen depending on how many apps you have. Um, I initially had 168 apps that I had to download, um, I guess download and then delete and then re-download kind of a few at a time. Um, but at any rate, when you are on the home screen, as long as you hold down on an app or a shortcut, I'm sorry.
Okay, so if you didn't choose to uninstall your apps manually, or you didn't choose to you know, do that one at a time, the alternative option was step number 3.5 in our five step process. So what this step entails is essentially just making a Samsung backup of your phone without your apps and home screen selected and restoring that backup right after you make it without the apps um, and home screen coming back up. So you will go down from the top of your menu, um, on your drop down menu, hit the settings button again. We will go all the way down to, I'm sorry, up to cloud and accounts or down depending on where you start. You will click on backup and restore. You'll go into backup settings. Wait for this to basically do its thing. And essentially it shouldn't take this long, um, but all you're doing is deselecting the home screen and the apps. Um, if you just des deselect the apps, it will default and deselect the home screen as well. Um, but at that point, once these are, you know, deselected, then back up now. Uh, for the intensive purpose of this video, I have already backed up my phone. I've already done this process, so I'm not going to do that. Um, once you're finished, it will pop you back out to the home screen if I'm not mistaken. Um, if not, just go back into your settings and go back into cloud and accounts, back up and restore. And this is the point where we are going to restore from that backup that we just made. So what this is doing is searching for your Samsung account, you know, your backup that you just made or any previous backups that have been made. Make sure to select the most recent one that we just made and then select everything except for home screen and apps. Always make sure that those are deselected and you go to restore now um, and then restore now. And like I said, for this video, I am going to skip this portion um, but I have already done that part. So once you're finished, then again, go back out to the home screen and you'll be ready for the next step. All right, so now we're ready for step four. While on the home screen, we are going to do a more hard re um, reboot. So a little bit more extensive reboot than your normal one. This will allow your phone to refresh organize the thoughts, you know, process what just happened with the uninstallation of all the apps. It will not harm your device. Just make sure to follow the steps so we can clearly, you know, clear out any lag or anything that would slow us down, you know, in the process of getting your device back to your user, you know, back to being able to use it without it rebooting every 10 to 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is for you. Essentially, you will just hold down the volume down key and the power key for a total of 45 seconds. Once you're finished with that, the screen will reboot probably two to three times. You will see a flash of logos, your Samsung logo, your carrier logo. Once this is complete, it will go back to your sign-in screen where you need to enter your password. You will then go back to the home screen, but don't be alarmed. Like I said, it will reboot two to three times. All right, so once we've finished with step four and we've gone through and done our reboot, we should be out to the home screen again. So once you're back on your home screen, we are going to start another process. This is the fifth and final step, but the most important step out of any step. So at this point, what I've done is added a screenshot of how to power down your device along with the key combination, the volume up, Bixby, and power button. So in order to wipe the system cache, we need to access an advanced settings menu that's not on our 
actual home screen. It's something that we are going to basically power our device off and access something that um, shouldn't typically be accessed, but for this purpose, we need to do this just to, again, clear the data, refresh, and make sure that we can put our phone back together and it's 100%. Okay, now that your phone is completely powered off and you are charging your phone at the same time, um, I am charging via wireless charging pad, but like I said, you can definitely use the wall outlet. Just please make sure that you're charging just to ensure that this process goes well um, and your phone doesn't die in the middle of this process. So that being said, we are now going to hold the volume up key and the Bixby button over here, wherever in the world it is. Sorry, volume up key, Bixby button, and the power key. So you're gonna start with the volume button and the Bixby button, and then briefly after, then add the home, or I'm sorry, the power button. So you're gonna hold this for maybe seven seconds or so. You're gonna wait till the Android logo pops up. Okay, or well, the Samsung logo at least. So this will pop up with an error. Um, like I said, you just want to more or less go through this screen, wait for this to pop up, and the recovery menu will pop up, which will give you the settings that I was talking about. So like I said, just give it just a moment. All right. Okay, so as you can see here, you have quite a few options, but the main one that we're focused on is the wipe cache partition. So the volume up key and the volume down key are your up and down arrows, and your power button is your OK or your enter. So we're going to use the volume down key to scroll down to wipe cache partition, and we're going to use the power key to hit enter. At this point, it's going to tell you that, it's going to ask you if you'd like to wipe the cache partition and tell you that this cannot be undone. Don't worry, these are just system files. These are not anything integral. So this will just more or less organize itself and recoup and install what it needs to. So at this point, we're going to use the volume down key and hit yes. So hit enter and it will take you back out to this menu again. So at this point, you want to, sorry, reorient the camera correctly. Hit enter again on system reboot, which is the very first option. It will reboot like this. With your Samsung logo. T-Mobile logo. And there you go. All right, so now that we've finished our five step process with uninstalling our apps and wiping the system cache along with a few things in between. You are now free to install your apps um, back onto your device. Just please do so a few at a time. I really and honestly recommend maybe four or five. Let your phone sit, you know, for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and if it doesn't reboot, move on, install more. But it's trial and error. You know, a lot of the mainstream apps don't crash and they're not going to cause your phone to reboot and go into this continuous loop but some of the apps are just not designed and not ready for your device some tweaks are just not ready you know add-ons that you've had on previous phones so at this point like I said you, you can install your themes back on your icons you know I've went back and, and pushed everything back onto my phone um, I'm just being very cautious when it comes to installing apps you know at this point like I said I have installed quite a few back on, and I will definitely include a link in the description um, or um, pictures, you know, like I said, just just showing you from here, you know, you guys can definitely tell I have a decent amount back on my phone. I haven't gone too ballistic as far as pushing anything else crazy. Um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to, you know, comment in the comment section or message me if you need something a little bit more direct. I you know, may not have the answer, but I do have a lot of resources. You know, I know a lot of technical support lines. My wife works at T-Mobile. You know, I'm pretty tech savvy. So you know, when it comes to 
trying to figure out this issue, I did absolutely everything I could to troubleshoot, and I finally found something. So I'm just glad to show, share this with everybody. You know, so again, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks.